And we're back <clears throat> with we our very special interview, which I will announce right after I plug the Tenable Party at Black Hat, which is happening Wednesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. At Wednesday night. Not this Wednesday night, but the Wednesday no, of Black Hat. What is July that? July 31st. July 31st. Thank you very much, Jack. Um, and somehow, I ended up on the party planning committee. Tenable for Black Hat. I'm excited. So, surprisingly enough, it will be a... So, uh, guess, everybody guess. Everybody. Paul was asked what we should have for a party in Las Vegas. You're not going to believe this. Paul, tell him the two key ingredients of this party. Rum and cigars. No way, dude. So, it's going to be at Rum Bar, which is at the Mirage, yeah. which if you come out of the forum shops... Hang a left, it's 50 feet right there. You walk into the Mirage, you walk to your right, and there you're at Rum There's Bar. There's the Rum Bar. You can sit outside and have cigars and rum, rum. fruity rum drinks. Rum, rum drinks and cigars. Who I've, I've hand-selected the cigars and the drinks for this event. <laughs> and you call that work. That's yeah. the amazing thing. <laughs> That's just... That's- uh, I, it's I don't be... know, when is Ron going to wake up and just finally <laughs> say... What are we paying these two for, anyway? <laughs> well, Ron's coming. Ron's going to be in attendance at the party. So that he, answers that question. Yeah. Ron, Ron will be there. And, uh, <laughs> and Marcus Random. And Mar- <laughs> yes. Will be there as well. Ron and Marcus. And so the... Um, rum and cigars. Cigars were uh, put together to order today. Uh, well, they weren't put together. They were rolled a long time ago, but they were put together today. <laughs> and there's some extra <sighs> special goodies cigars in there too so I'm very excited about this party um, I do want to also say that we have a black hat briefings VIP pass to give away thank you to uh, Neil for sending this to me Neil tracked me down sent it to me and we will give it away at the end of the show provided you are the first person to well you'll find out at the end of the show what you have to do to qualify to be the proud recipient of a Black Hat Black Pass VIP pass. Good for any briefings. Must be used by December 31st, 2013. I strongly recommend that you come Black Hat this year and have some rum and cigars with me. Mike Murray and Katie Rodson, welcome to the show. Thanks, Paul. Welcome back to the show. You guys were on the show before. Katie's shaking a drink mixer. This is why they keep coming back to the show. They're, they're experts. Really, we just, want, we just want an excuse to drink. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm, I'm serious. If you, guys, if you guys put me on the show, I'm, I'm on it. What are, what are you making, Katie? Um, I made a, a, cock, or a cocktail, a martini with sweet vermouth. Ah, very uh, nice. Cla- the classic martini. And, Mike, what are you drinking? Uh, the same thing I'm most of the time drinking. Champagne. Champagne. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So, so wait, hold on. Mike and Katie, you, you, last time you were on the show, you did not do the five questions. Yeah, what, what's going on with that? Yeah, who wants to go first? Okay, Mike, since you're up on the screen, you're going to go first. All Three right. words to describe yourself. Uh, floppy-headed Canadian, not like Terrence and Phillip. If yeah. you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? <laughs> Potato salad. In a game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? I, 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 will, I will catch rather than pitch. If you, people take the longest time to answer that question, by the way. <laughs> if you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? The title goes here. I'm in a closet. That's his answer. <laughs> Stranded on a desert island, which tablet would you bring with you if you could choose only one? Android, iPad, or Surface? I'll I'll be more precise. My next is 10. (sighs) Katie! Yes? Now that you already know what the questions are and you have answers fresh in your mind, so you can answer them more intelligently than Mike did, not that we doubted you for a second there in that little game, but three words to describe yourself. Uh, Awesome, short, drinker. If you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? Again. In a game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first? Second. If you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Those are some fancy fucking pancakes. 
<laughs> That's pretty awesome. I like that. Stranded on a desert island, which tablet would you bring with you if you could choose only one? Android, iPad, or Surface? Android. <clears throat> Excellent. Realize the answer there is book. Book. Like well, book. book doesn't need batteries. It's kind of an unfair question. Yeah, but I wouldn't need batteries on, a, on an island, though. That's so right. <laughs> Plenty of salt water. <laughs> so, you guys are here to talk about social engineering war stories. Oh, yes, are we ever. I, I actually, I've, I have to tell you something. I, I'm going to admit this publicly. For the first time in my life, I had to pull out my, my get-out-of-jail-free card last week. Wow. Never has happened in like 15 years of doing this. The thing he's not admitting is that I did not. Ooh. <laughs> oh. I got away clean. Yeah, she got out clean. Was I this a caught. was this a high you, was this a high security facility or? Uh, pretty actually, they were pretty good. They they had just moved into a new complex, and uh, their people were kind of on top of it. And they had done a decent job. Was this um, the, uh, this was not the first time they had a physical penetration test? I don't believe so. It was the first time in this facility, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, um, they had been doing a whole bunch of journal check. So how'd you get caught, Mike? I, uh, they, they had made the data center a, uh, the primary target, the crown jewels. And we were near the end of the engagement, and I saw somebody walk into the data center, and I went, Okay, well, we're just going to be ballsy. And I pretty much wa I waited until he was at least 10 feet away and stuck my foot in the door and walked in behind him. Um, he was the he, only other guy in the room with him. Yeah, the problem was he was literally the only guy in the room, so he heard the footsteps. And, uh, and I got caught shortly after taking selfies of myself and sending them to the client. <laughs> yeah. it, and I Oops. couldn't talk my way out of it. I tried. I was like... Oh, I'm here with the IT folk. And he said, which one? And I went, it's my first day. I don't remember. And it, and it didn't work. It I, didn't work. Yeah, he didn't believe you for a second. No, it didn't buy it for a second. So, yeah, first time ever. It was, it was quite disappointing. At the same time, it was, quite, it was quite heartening because the client had really given us the, oh, you won't get in there. Yeah. So... So, uh, I, it's interesting. I want to get you guys' take on this. I recently tested... Um, or saw a, a data center that had several doors um, that were secured by not just an RFID swipe, but a keypad. So you had to swipe the RFID swipe, enter a combination on the keypad. There was one, two of those doors. There was a fingerprint reader with another RFID swipe. Then through that door, then there was another RFID with a keypad. Like, what do you, is there a back door? Is it... Do you get, like, Tom Cruise Mission Impossible on it, or? What, what was the place like? Um, this was an off-site data center. So, so my, my only question, my first question is, does it have drop ceilings? Uh, I don't think so, no. I think it was, like, right up to the rafters. Ah, uh, this, this sounds like, what was the? Was that it, was my only thought, was, like, there's something on the roof that you can drop in. But the thing was, the floors were alarmed. So any motion... Outside of hours or not expected, it trips the alarms. What was the the Mission one? Impossible. Yeah, that's, that's what I said. Mission <laughs> Impossible, right? Okay, so I'm glad you what, agree. What was the me. one a couple of years ago where they like drove trucks into the side of the building and walked through the walls? Do you yeah. remember that one? Like two yeah. years ago, there's some people that were. I mean, they were just stealing hardware, but they right. were like slamming through the wall. This one though, like the the walls are they're pretty far in, and then the back walls where like all the generators are like getting. I I don't know, man. I'm, I'm telling you, this was serious. I'll give you my opinion, and I'm going to get myself in so much trouble for saying this. Um, it, Paul, you had no hope. The only way you're doing that, especially given the, the number of IT folk that are male, is, is to be female. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, and, and this is, let me just elaborate a little, because this is how this went down this last week, is when he says, you are female, that's code for, oh, it doesn't have drop ceilings. Katie gets to be Tom Cruise. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> because I had any better chance of getting in, it's just apparently I would be easier to lower. Right. Uh, it, so don't don't feel too bad. Oh, but yeah. see, I don't totally agree with the female part because when we were trying to get into the data center and the whole there was a a, a door a coffee center right by the door, and I ended up 
leaving the area when Mike was getting ready to shoulder surf his way in because I looked so out of place. All right. of the people were dudes. So me standing there and then like walking to the door looks massively weird. Mm. So I don't know. I don't really know why you would think I would do so much better. Uh, I, you should tell them. You should tell them what you did last week. It didn't work in that situation, but it might have in many others. Yeah, please share with us another war story. Well, cupcakes, Katie. Cupcakes. Um, it was a great story. Okay. <laughs> So um, there's uh, the front desk. The only way you could get in is if you had a guest pass. Um, so rather than try to like, you know, like dive across the barricade kind of thing, uh, I tried to get a guest pass. And what I did is I dressed up in the pinkest shirt I could find. I looked very much like a sorority girl. And I looked um, for, which was kind of difficult because I have shaved sides. So mm. it kind of, it kind of was weird. But anyway, um, I found this girl that had just started working there. She was apparently in marketing. She went to college nearby. Um, she went to some sorority, and I got cupcakes that just said congratulations on them. And I went to the front desk, and I said, so-and-so is my friend. I'm dropping through town. Big things have happened in her life, and I surprised her with these cupcakes. And to be perfectly honest, he probably would have let me through, but his supervisor was sitting right there, and he kept looking at her. But it was that concept of, like, if Mike would have walked in and been like, oh, my friend from school, her name's Jennifer, and she's got big things going on in life, I brought cupcakes, the guy would be like, no, go away, I'll give them to her yourself. Like, yeah, 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 exactly. But I did it, and he was really accommodating. He's like, oh, that's so nice. Let me just go get her. I'm like, no, don't get her. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't go find her. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that's where I had uh, much more of an advantage, but it was. It still didn't work. It still didn't work because the supervisor was sitting right there. That was the thing that kind of sucked about this whole thing, and I was telling Mike about it. Um, I remember when I used to teach 1010, and we get to, like, social engineering and, like, social psychology, and we talk about all the stupid human trips, tricks that occur that you can utilize to your advantage. Um, and every there was always one stump to presenter that was like, what if this and what if that? If they know you're coming, none of it works. Right. None of it works at all. And it's like this entire company – had been preparing, they were on high anxiety. It's like in school when they would tell you, oh, um, so the drug co- the drug dogs are coming sometime this week, be on alert, and anyone that was of importance would do that, I guess. I don't know. Um, they were on anxiety the whole time. So most social engineering it wouldn't totally work because they were all anxious about things. So we had to, to do it another way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the uh, funny thing about it is one of, my, one of the things that almost always works is the loading dock. You know, yeah, I was gonna say. So, if you, how many UPS uniforms do you have? Uh, you, you know what? You don't even need a UPS uniform. Like my favorite thing, and we we did it last week. And frankly, we were ninety percent of the way in the building. Um, and, and and last week was perfect. We were in the Northeast, and uh, you guys live up near there. Holy crap! Was it hot and humid last week? It was. I actually wasn't here, but I heard that it was. <laughs> and so we, we walked around the building to war. You know. To the loading dock, and as we walked in the door, I looked at Katie and went, this was your stupid idea to go for a walk. This is way too hot. I'm just cutting through here. And kept yeah, walking. Yeah, you punched, by the way. If you don't tell the person that's with you that you're going to yell at them in front of strangers, <laughs> not <laughs> sort of an improv. But, but so we go through the loading dock. Well, that way it was more realistic, Katie. It's true. No, you almost got decked. <laughs> this is your stupid idea. Pardon? <laughs> that's awesome. So... We, we actually, we were 90% of the way into the building. The guy that was sitting there, he wasn't a guard. He was like a loading dock manager. He's like, oh, yeah, man, it's hot. And we kept walking, and we were maybe 50 yards past him, and you heard the walkie-talkie squeak. Um, like, people walking through the loading dock, go find them. And, and, like, all of a sudden, footsteps up behind us, and he's like, yeah, sorry, man, they're making a big deal. I'd let you go, but... And, and so we just walked out, you know, pretending to be employees. Like, oh, we'll, we'll go around front. Don't worry about it. Kind of stuff. But, yeah, they – so what was interesting, and this goes back to Katie, what Katie said. That's, that's pretty normal. I was okay with that. And then we drove by an hour later, and there was a security guard full on standing in the loading dock door entrance, just standing there, like stationed there. This is not a high security facility. This is just a normal everyday business. How many businesses have you guys ever broken into that have that many security guards sitting around just extra that they can go stand in the loading dock just for fun? 
Okay, that's interesting. It, it, it was exactly what Katie said. They were ready, and they were on high alert. And we got in anyway. Nice. So how did you get in? I was an unlocked door. Lunchroom door. The what? Lunchroom back door. Oh, yeah, oh. the lunchroom back door. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, we came in the back door. Mike found a way in the back door. <laughs> that Mike. <sighs> he does that a lot. He had, he had to come out of the closet to find the back <laughs> to door. To find the back door. <laughs> Nice. No, it was, uh, it was... Everyone's going to sneak out of the closet from this podcast, by the way. So, do you guys have more war stories? Oh, dude, I have lots of them. All right, let's, um, let's, see, let's hear a couple more, and then I want to talk about some defenses. Okay, fav- favorite one ever. And Actually, Katie, do you want to go first? He already started their chief, so go for it. <laughs> He's like, this is my favorite one ever. It's awesome. Oh, Katie, did you, did you want to go? I'm trying to be... I'm, you know what? I have a... You know what, Mike? Just go, okay? Yeah. Um... So it's freaking hot out here. This was your idea. At a company, <laughs> exactly. At a company I worked for a lot of years ago, um, I was an employee at a major hedge fund for a week. Um, never had a badge. Never had anything other than um, driving, basically driving to the entrance gate. They were on a campus, isolated off in the world. Um, you know, talking my way past the security guard at the gate so I could park my car, and then shoulder surfing in. And commandeering an office for a week while we basically walked around and pilfered everything in sight, including sweatshirts and hats and um, all kinds of other things. And basically at the end of it, we presented the results to the client and the client said, oh, well, you didn't get into my area, which is like on the third floor. And we're like, is that your laptop? He's like, yeah. Turn it over. And one of the team's business cards was stuck to the bottom of his <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty I awesome. love those. Those are, those are fun. So, no, I, when you guys go to these engagements, did you just do strictly physical penetration testing? No. So the one we did last week was, um, it's never joint, at least in my experience. I don't. You guys might have different experience than I do, but in, in my experience, it's never, like, show up and break into the network from inside. It's... We did an external pen, we did a phishing yeah. assessment, yeah. we did a wireless assessment, and we did the physical, and, and the, res- the report is, hey, just so you know, with the access we got from the physical, we could have done XYZ. Yep. We didn't while we were there. Right, right. That's pretty cool. Katie, do you have some, uh, some more favorite stories? Um, I have, well, I have a story. Yeah, sure. Um, it's not an official engagement, but it was a, a social engineering situation. I, uh, in graduate school, I, as with everything, there's a, just a ton of paperwork, and I needed one stupid piece of paper uh, to get through something. Did I, did I talk about this already? Uh, nope. Okay. I'm going to say no. Um, I need one stupid piece of paper for something. Um, just, and I, that's all I need. So I went and got it, and I came back, and I gave it to my the chair of the department, and she looks at me completely white-faced, asks me to wait, goes and calls apparently the president of the graduate school, and asks if you talk to me. No, and she comes back and goes, how did you get this? And I'm like, I went and got it. Like, I took it. Um, and there was this big old thing. Apparently, all I had to do, what I, all I did is I walked in, looked at the lady and said, hey, I'm with uh, Gretchen Peacock. I need to go into the office, and I need to get a file. And she's like, okay, Sure walked in i had no clue it was the president's office and that i was going into basically an entire file of every grad student's a complete academic history and all pii and their financial information i picked up my file and i brought it to my advisor like none of those files are supposed to leave his office so there's this whole thing a security card came back and he took the file and he took it back to the president and the president walked back with the file Oops. So that was that was one of my more favorite things. More just because I scared the shit out of them, but not, <laughs> not necessarily because of of the excitement or the intrigue of it, but just because I I had no real clue that it was a big deal because it was really easy to get it, and they freaked out. It was funny. So what are the <clears throat> common the top two techniques that you're using to be successful? You know what what adds to the story of the security of an organization. Uh, what are the two things that work the best? For them to do? To oh, for you, for you to do. For us to do. Yeah. Um, for us to do, first would be to figure out their culture. It sounds like such a weird word, but their culture. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to find out if 
know, do you have a desk of guards that are like really sweet grandparents that do want nothing but to help somebody? Mm. Or are they like absolutely hardcore kind of thing? In which case, yeah, one of the things is you have to figure out what is most likely going to work. Um, and then the second part is honestly to do enough, it sounds kind of, kind of no doubt, but to do enough research to where you have just enough answers to be confident. Because uh, if you have to all of a sudden, like, what, what was this? What, what floor? As long as you know, like, third floor is executives. I'm going up there to talk to this person because that's where legal is. Mm -hmm. um, you're good. So it's, it's a matter of knowing the culture as well as having enough information, information to be confident, even if it's not necessarily the perfect thing you should be doing to social engineer. So in your reconnaissance phase, what percentage of your reconnaissance is done – while you're not on site, and what percentage of reconnaissance is done once you're on site? So I was bummed about the last one um, because normally it's a lot more off site. Mm. Um, you know, we, we do a lot of like, um, like LinkedIn searches and things like that, and understanding a little bit about the company. But usually, if we're going to do a physical, we do Google Earth, you know, and, and Google, you know, understand it. Um, on Google Earth, this company last week was a hole in the ground, hmm. which made all off-site recon, re recon for approach and recon for understanding the building layout and all that kind of stuff, yeah. really hard. Yeah. But it, it also, it really depends on what part you're talking about. For the initial just perimeter, like, I got into the building, yeah, you do a lot of that off-site so you can figure out what exactly you're going to do. But once you have to do, for example, to get to the data center or to get to the executive's office, that is a lot more of the on-the-spot observing behavior of others, seeing how comfortable everybody is, um, doing your reconnaissance at the moment on-site and adapting to it immediately. Uh, you couldn't do that off-site. Because, I mean, if you honestly knew that much about the internal workings and uh, going about of the, of the building, it, from, from the outside, it, it's going to be easier than anything to get in anyway. So it just depends on what part you're talking about. John, you still there? Yes, I am. Did you have any questions? Nope, I'm good. Really, to offense or defense? I wanted to start talking about what you actually recommend to people. What do you recommend? They get new security guards? Um, honestly, no. Uh, in this, because in there's the thing I recommend is just tell it like almost like giving them a brief education in how to socially engineer something and not in the, the the way that most companies go about it in the wrong way is they try to do the scare tactic they're like everybody out there is to get you oh my gosh in which everyone just becomes very like yeah whatever that's not the case you guys are just being paranoid mm. um but if you if you just bring it closer to home and do things like hey um i i came in with cupcakes and you were going to help me oh holy crap i didn't even realize oh yeah people come in with pizza that, that totally makes sense or yeah, it is a matter of confidence. And not just telling them the, hey, this is how you socially engineer, but here's the easy, easy, easy behavior that you can do to try to prevent it. Like, look for a badge. If it's not there, just, just ask. It's fine. Because that's mainly where a lot of the social engineering comes from. We walked all over a place that requires everybody to have a badge, but because of the concept of it's rude to ask if you belong there, nobody's going to ask us anything. So it's making that kind of thing okay. I think I think there's there's one other thing that I would say, which is, as far and Katie was 100 percent right on. Um, really, the, the one thing that I would that I would add to that is, um, when you have you have to you have to find a way to educate your employees that when you have a process, the deviation from it is is actually the issue. The the supervisor did the right thing in the situation where she walked up to the desk and you know played played on the guy's heartstrings and the guy was an old grandpa and he was a very sweet man and he would have let her in. The supervisor did the right thing there mm. by being sort of a hard ass and saying, no, this is our policy. You know, we will happily give her the cupcakes, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Katie's not very happy about that. She didn't say anything. She just sat there. <laughs> so wait, did she, did they actually deliver the cupcakes? We don't know. We've been trying to find out for a week. <laughs> I still know her extension. It's 5028. Yeah, so someone someone ate the cupcakes. 
Yeah. Yeah. You guys got to put little RFID chips inside just, the cupcakes. I was just thinking that. <laughs> like, how, he how, ate one of my cupcakes. So, cause, so could you put a, a pwn plug in one cupcake <laughs> and a battery in the other cupcake and have a little ribbon to power it? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next time, next time. I'll let you Listen, hey, Pony Express guys, if you're listening, get to work on that. We need an edible Pony Express with Wi Fi <laughs> in it. A cupcake version of the Pony Express would be awesome. That's I'll awesome. Know. Yeah, I, mean, so I know it sounds, it's, it's kind of the funny thing. So, one of the things I'll be talking, like, that I'll be talking about in, in Vegas is this concept of we basically have history that repeats itself. Like, we have so many things that are have been in the past, like, back to Romans, that is effective in social engineering, but for some reason we don't learn them. So, I mean, we just keep letting so it go. So what you're saying we is we need to put on a toga the next Yes, social actually, that would work much better. Uh, yeah. okay. That was what I was going to do tonight, by the way. A- after you came part. out of the closet. Right, after I came out of the closet, exactly. <laughs> Togas. <laughs> Episode 350. <laughs> it's going to be a toga party. <laughs> Episode 350, toga party. You have to invite me to that one. <laughs> oh, Katie, that reminds me. I've got to catch up with you in Vegas because I, I, I have actually oh, yeah, for we're everybody. We're, we're wearing. I have my liver strong silicon wristbands. <laughs> They, they actually do. I can vouch for this. They say liver strong on them. <laughs> yeah. I yes. I will, I'm going to find, I will find you. I am. So, yes. Liver strong for those of us who, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad yeah. Yeah. You guys do a toga party and don't invite me. I'll be upset. Okay. Yeah. No we'll, kidding. We'll, we'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Toga party. We'll, yeah, take, you, we'll take it to the event committee. Steve, I think you're, uh, you're taxing the auto focus on that. Uh-huh. So guys, what are some other, um, Defensive recommendations that you make. Is it mostly just user awareness? Or are there some, like, tactical things you recommend? So, Katie, Katie looks like she's still thinking, so I'll jump in. Um, this client last week had done a really good job of a lot of the tactical stuff. Um, the, the, so, she mentioned the front gate. I've, I've seen maybe three or four really like entryways that were this well designed. Basically, it was it was an entirely welcoming front area that was a complete man trap. The only way through those gates was to shoulder surf behind somebody to the point that you were bumping into them, or to dive over the like small railing off to the side in full view of all the cameras. And they had done a fantastic job of that. And frankly. After they locked the back door, which, by the way, within an hour of me pulling the letter, they had three security guards at the back door and were and two maintenance people figuring out how to lock the back door yeah. going forward. Um, after they locked the back door, that place was pretty solid. They had cameras everywhere. They had uh, a control room of people watching the cameras. They had a front door that was really solid and impossible to, you know, to get around other than through Katie's way of being... Uh, you know, endearing. Excuse me. Um, they really did a great job, and and so it's that physical design of the organ of the environment that makes it easy to not have to worry about user interaction afterwards. Right. It's, it's sort of like it's sort of like with network security. If you design an intelligent architecture around your firewalls, your antivirus, your anti-spam, your endpoints, you know, your vulnerability assessment. If you design all of those things. You can minimize user behavior. You never take it out of the out of the equation, right? But you can at least start to minimize the so, issue. So, speaking of that, um, I was on an engagement once, and they had these devices uh, before you had to get on the elevator, and there were these glass doors that would open and close. So you swipe your RFID, glass door opens. There's little lights that tell you, like, "Oh, proceed this way." <laughs> if someone tailgates, and the alarm goes off. Yeah. Yep. Are you guys exactly. fans of those? It was exactly those. Yes. That? Is that those are the ones you talked about hurtling over? Yeah. It was very similar. The other thing about so even stuff like that, that one of the other things I'm gonna add to what Mike said is that it really the thing that was really effective about where what made it so difficult last week was because they were at that heightened level of anxiety. Right. Um we've gone to other organizations and done a pen test where I literally watched through and the alarm went off, and they did nothing. 
Yep, no I know. I've anything. observed that behavior they're too. They're so used to it. Yep. They're like, yeah, yeah, nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, whatever. We asked all of uh, afterwards. We ended up asking, um, doing an, uh, an assessment, and we asked employees like, why don't you ask people like if they belong on the floor? If you like, would you ask them if you noticed that they didn't belong? They're like, yeah. no, because it's so big or because it's so rude. They were yes, Canadian, yes. Um, and uh, so that's that's the thing about this organization was that an alarm. Everybody looked. They're like, oh my gosh, something's happening. Really. Um, so it's what I would recommend is, I mean, you don't want to constantly be doing drills, but you interject a drill randomly um, to where you do bring the security back, like back up to a, right. a le- slightly more heightened level of anxiety. Well, I think um, randomly if someone's tailgating through some of those things, the floor should just open up and they drop into a chute in the basement. That would be better. Yeah. I'm a fan of that. The, I'm a fan the, of electric shocks. In this situation. The other thing, uh, though... Was in the similar this same situation I'm describing, to have those things where you have to swipe the card um, off to the left of the security desk, and behind the security desk, so there was space between you know the security desk and the wall, um, so you could walk behind the security desk. There was this little open area where people could converse, and there was couches. There was like a little kitchen where they had coffee. There was a conference room. There was a big training room. Um, so. One, like myself, could walk in, uh, kind of wave to the security guard, be like, oh, I'm waiting for someone, or, you know, hey, can I just, can I get a cup of coffee, you know, whatever. Uh, or the security guard wasn't there at that particular time. Walk in, walk around the security desk, walk into the conference room. Oh, say for an example, put a poem plug in the conference room that had an Ethernet jack, and, and walk out. Uh, and, and that was, you know, that was the back door that I discovered in this particular organization. So. Yeah. yeah. That's what Katie was describing earlier. And, and, and what these guys did really well, no one went past security without a guest badge. No one. Yeah. And, and, and if you can stick to that. Badge, but they had to be escorted as well. Yeah, um, you have to be with someone that has a regular badge. They had to be with someone that had a regular badge. So I couldn't just, like, nagle my way and do a guest badge. Um, but, I mean, but the other, the other part about it is that like, once you get in there, it's kind of like what you just described. You're like, yeah, whatever, business as usual. I go into that back little room. Is you just look like you have to belong there. Like, yeah, that's absolutely. probably yeah. the hardest part there's about it. There's a thousand ways you could look like you would belong, and that, that was my, kind of my point to them was there's a thousand scenarios that can put me in that back conference room without anyone noticing, and that's yeah. bad. With one exception, Paul. I mean, and, and here's, here's the thing that I've noticed over the years, and, and this goes back to the recon question. You have, so, so there's two ways to get into an organization. There's what you just talked about. I walk in, I stick a phone plug, and I leave. Um, and there's the, I'm embedded, and I can live there forever. Yeah, yeah. And, and we did a, <coughs> pat ourselves on the back from last week. We managed to nail the culture precisely in terms of dress and ways of handling it. it if we hadn't known people on site, um, and if we had never told anyone, if I hadn't done that stupid, crazy, like, I'm going to just jump into the data center behind somebody, we could have lived there for months. They would have never locked the back door. We could have walked in the back door every single day, and no one would have ever questioned us because we looked like we belonged. You know, I was, the, the uniform was khaki pants and a bluish shirt with, you know, with a collar and long sleeves. And, and like, that was how I was dressed. Katie was dressed like all the women. Um, literally, we could have... <laughs> I like how you describe yours in detail, like it was very, very unique. Katie's dressed like the women. Uh, let, let, let me explain. All the men dressed very similarly. Khaki pants is like, I mean, you guys live in the Northeast. In the Northeast, in the financial services sector, khaki pants is the thing. Women are dressed, you know, well, professionally, but there's more color involved. There's more, um, you know, some are in dresses, some are in pants, some are in suits, but it, the, the range is bigger. That was all in men, Katie. I know. Um, yeah, it's it's honestly it's uh it's actually kind of funny. The as far as back to the my favorite war stories, some of the best ones that I've done were not actually on an engagement that we were paid to do. It was just like I was tired of waiting for the client to come get me, so I, I just went where I had to go um, because I I looked comfortable and I went hmm. so. Well, guys, thank you very much for coming back on Paul.com. No, you already no. did your five questions. We got that out of the way in the beginning of uh, the episode, of the interview, rather. So, 
Uh, you, Katie and Mike, are you both co-presenting at B-Sides Las Vegas? Nope. Just nope. Katie? I'm just talking right now. No, Mike's doing something too, right? Yeah, so we're, we are both talking, but we're talking separately. Okay. So, yeah. Katie, what is your talk title? Uh, that's a very good question. Ask Mike what his is, and then I'll tell okay, you Okay, Mike, mine. what's your talk title? I don't remember the title, so I will Okay, tell you. Mike, what's Katie's talk title? No, no. I'm, going to, I'm going to out myself. I'm in the underground. I'm in the underground track with a good friend of mine. <laughs> Got it. We are going to be uh, we are going to be live on stage, writing zero day Android malware that avoids all of the current antivirus and anti malware products nice. Uh, available nice. for Android. Nice. Mine so, is sexy. Mine's, <laughs> mine's called Diamonds Fitness and Cults Manipulation for Fun and Profit. Very nice. Well, mm. I hope I get a chance to get up, catch up with you both in Vegas. I hope you come to the Tenable party. Thank you very much for coming back on Paul.com. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. So with that, we'll take a break, come back, and talk about the stories this week. <laughs>